afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Mesa City Council study session for October the 16th, 2017. Uh, all of our council is present and accounted for. The, the first item on our agenda for this meeting is to review the items on the agenda, on the agenda for tonight's uh, council meeting. So please refer to that document. Uh, first several items are uh, getting the meeting started and approving various liquor license applications. Item four, various purchase contracts. And uh, it's a fairly short meeting tonight. Item five are a few resolutions. And then item six, we do have a, the introduction of various zoning ordinances. Mr. Freeman, I know, did you indicate you had a question regarding one of these cases? Yeah, I do. I, Mayor, I'd like to just talk about 6A. Uh, that was a very intriguing, uh, to me, it, it started in 1883, uh, the first ordinance in the city of Mesa, I think, in 1883. But regardless, I'd like to know a little bit of history <coughs> about how that's coming and letting the <coughs> staff know we're very much thankful for the robust development in the downtown area. And I support Council Member Glover and all that's going on down there. Sure. Mayor. Um Councilmember Freeman, Jeff McVeigh, the manager of Downtown Transformation. I, um, I came prepared. I have just a few slides I can run through really quickly, give you an update of where we stand on the project. Um, tonight, you're you're introducing a rezoning of the form base code, um, which will allow this development to happen down the road. But overall, I wanted to give you a, a quick overview of the development itself. It's approximately three and a half acres. It'll include 20,000 plus square feet of commercial space, retail space office space, as well as nearly 300 units of market rate residential. Um, it will include development of a new three-story um, parking structure um, that will be attached to a building that fronts onto Main Street, which is seven stories tall, as well as the addition of four stories of market rate apartments above the existing Pomeroy, three-story Pomeroy parking garage. So in total, we'll have two new seven-story buildings. Customer Freeman, did you have a question? No, oh, I thought I saw a question coming. <laughs> Um, in addition to the, the private improvements, the, the agreements that we're working on and we're getting very close to um, finalizing, we'll also include um, some public improvements, um, the, the narrowing and streetscape improvements to Pomeroy Road itself, um, the addition of um, new, new um, street trees as well as uh, improvements to Gateway Park um, that will help provide a nice visual cue from the light rail station all the way over into this um, um, development. It will also include safety enhancements to the existing Pomeroy garage, new lighting, painting, things like that that will make the garage more um, user friendly for the general public as well. Um, I did miss that this does include um, approximately 12 to 15 townhome units that will wrap the um, existing garage and create a kind of a screen from the parking structure. There's a couple renderings of, of the, the project itself. This is the Main Street. If you're looking from, um, from the east towards the west along Main Street, this would be the new seven-story building that includes retail, um, office space, and residential units. Um, towards the side, you can start to see the townhome units that wrap the, the parking structure. And then this is a look from Gateway Park looking to the south and west. Um, this element here is a new tower with elevator that, that will serve the garage and serve all the units above it. As well as, you, again, you get to see the view of more townhome units, and then these are the units that are, are above the parking garage. I don't know if you wanted a, kind of an overview of the rezoning request, but I, I have that in case you do. Otherwise, I'll happy to take questions or comments. Well, I, I would kind of like a, a view. So we are implementing uh, the, uh, we're, we're shifting to a different type of zoning for this property, right? And it's more form-based. Yep. In other words, uh, we're more interested in what it looks like and what the occupancy is rather than that here's the, the small list of things you can do on this piece of property, right? Correct. Is that what we're doing? Is, is applying form-based coding to this piece of property? You've got it, Mayor. Um, <laughs> In 2012, when the form-based code was adopted, it was, it was adopted in, in, as a floating zone in parallel to the downtown zoning districts that are, have been in place since 1983-ish. Um, so right now, the zoning is downtown core. Um, through this rezoning, really what we're doing is changing where the separation between a T5 Main Street and a T5 Main Street Flex is, and I'm sorry about the, 
jargon, but um, really it's shifting a line to the north so that those townhome units can be built along Pomeroy Road. Um, that's really the only change um, from a building perspective. The heights are, that are allowed in between the two districts are very similar. The uses that are allowed are very similar. What this allows is first floor residential, whereas um, under the other or the current zoning, um, that would have to be active retail uses and the market just doesn't, is not gonna drive market or retail uses along Pomeroy going south of Main Street today. But what the Main Street Flex allows is over time, that though if a commercial activity wants to come in, that the zoning does allow it. So yes, the box is important, but the use is less, much less important. Great. And having an urban vertical residential uh, use of adjacent to light rail is obviously what we're looking for. And, and, and it's, I guess, unfortunate the current zoning would not allow for that, but uh, have, uh, apply the more flexible overlay seems very appropriate to me. But thank you very much. Thank you for asking the question, Mr. Freeman. Any other questions or concerns about this item? Thank you very much. So continuing through the agenda for today, any, again, item six is, uh, is this is owning case. Yes, Mr. Thompson. Well, item 7A, I had a phone call just before we came in, and um, I would like to have Bill come up and speak on item 7A, if you would, please. Thank you. Kind of give us an update on what it is and what's going on, what they're proposing. Mr. Jibjiniak, uh, our Economic Development Director. Thank you, Mayor, Councilor Thompson. Um, item 7A is a uh, proposed 100,000 square foot retail box that is going to be located, the site, to give everybody a little bit more detail, north side of Ray, um, along the on-ramp from power onto the 202 going eastbound. Um, it has great visibility from the on-ramp, which is why this retailer has chosen this site. The rezoning and the lot split that is necessary is really due to um, its industrial land going to retail use. It has spurred some other interest in that whole corridor as well. Uh, and it is a, um, a, a big box, um, again, retail user. I don't want to throw it out specifically, but it is something that we've been very supportive of from a, uh, from a use of a, of a lot of, re of industrial land in that area. And we think that's a, actually a nice start to that area, a nice jump start for that area. Bill, are they going to be doing any manufacturing on site at all, or is it strictly just retail? Uh, it'll be warehouse and, and uh, retail sales. There'll be no manufacturing at that location. Great. Thank you very much. Okay, that so that was agenda item 6B. I'm sorry, 7A. Uh, and then the only other item on our agenda is conducting a public hearing on uh, an item on Haas Road. Any other questions regarding tonight's agenda? Hearing none, the next item on our agenda for this meeting is to approve minutes from an executive session held on September the 28th. Is there a motion to that effect? Thank you, Mr. Glover, Mr. Thompson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item is to acknowledge receipt of minutes of boards. Is there a motion to that effect? Thank you, Mr. Glover and Mr. Luna. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item is to hear reports on meetings and conferences attended. Yes, Mr. Luna. Uh, I want to thank uh, Tony Lithgow and Chief Camelli for joining me for uh, Luna Landing over at MV PETA and my assistant Marisa. We had a good turnout of people uh, wanting to come and ask me questions on District 5. So thanks for all your help. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Also, at, is it 589 Cobra? Oh, on, we had a uh, visit from uh, welcoming home veterans from Vietnam over at Falcon Field Airport on Saturday from 11 to 3, and they brought a Cobra 589, I believe, and uh, it was a great event. A lot of people were there. Um, the mayor was there as well, Councilmember Thompson and Congressman Biggs, so it was a good event to celebrate and to uh, thank our Vietnam veterans for their service, so we appreciate that, that opportunity. I did something else, but I can't remember what. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Today I had, I was, I was in an Iron Chef competition over at Red Mountain oh, Mesa nice. Community College. Unfortunately, I got second place, but. You, so you didn't pull out the tamale recipe? No, but we yeah, did fajitas. make some good food, though. Okay. They were almost like fajitas. Yeah. Yeah, almost. Next time we'll win. Okay. The tamales would have won. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All right. Any other reports on meetings or conferences or schedule? Uh, if not, Ms. Kent. Tell us what we're doing next. 
Uh, Mayor and Council, tomorrow we will have a groundbreaking for a Marriott Residence Inn um, that's located near the US 60 and Chrisman at 1130. Just a reminder, we will not be having a study session this Thursday. It has been canceled. Our next um, study session will be the following Thursday, October 26. We have three city events on Saturday. It's pretty busy. So we'll start off with our household hazardous waste collection event. That will be from 8 to noon at East Mesa Service Center at 639 East Decatur. Then we have Celebrate Mesa. And that will be from 5 to 9 at Red Mountain Soccer Complex at 905 North Sun Valley. And then we have the Spark After Dark event, which will be at our Mesa Art Center from 8 to 10. And there'll be some fantastic artists and live music and so forth there. So it'll be a busy Saturday in Mesa. That's it. Thank you. I'm sure we'll have a huge crowd at uh, Celebrate Mesa at Red Mountain Park on Saturday, as we always do. So. If that's not an event your family has gone to in the past, you really, it's a particular, it's kind of a Halloween theme. Uh, I think a, a lot of kids come wearing Halloween costumes, but there's a lot of booths, uh, fun for every member of the family. Uh, you won't be sorry if you go to that event. Uh, any other announcements we ought to make? If there are none, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? Thank you, Mr. Glover, Mr. Thompson. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you, we are adjourned. We will. Uh, be upstairs in a few minutes to start the formal council meeting. <laughs>